they finally uh, they finally uh, opened up and gave them access to that service. Uh, now I lived in when I was in El Paso and I became a uh, realtor in El Paso. We had access to the, that group out there. They did not uh, uh, discriminate like they did back in Dallas. And let me point out to you that uh, about El Paso, mm -hmm. El Paso was more of a Western, I guess, type city than, it's not a, a hardcore Southern city mm -hmm. uh, like Dallas. Mm -hmm. In El Paso, uh, <coughs> the, when, my, when I got there, the schools were integrated the public school system. They just did away with the black schools and, <laughs> and integrated everybody. Uh, the, uh, they didn't enforce the laws like they did, you know, back in Dallas, you know, the segregation laws. Of course, there were some places out there that didn't, you know, they, they, they didn't want us to, to uh, like the theaters were segregated. And then you had the military there. At that time, he, we had Fort Bliss, and then you had Diggs Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. All that is most military. And of course, uh, you know, they wanted the, that business. Uh, so they, they was not really hardcore like it is back here. Uh, uh, I participated in, 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 in the desegregation of the theaters in El Paso uh, as a student. And I hope, by the way, I want to put this in. Uh, I uh, participated in the election of the first Hispanic uh, a male of El Paso, mm -hmm. uh, Raymond Tellus. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I worked in his election. And uh, President Kennedy appointed him ambassador to, to Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing I want to tell you about Texas Western, too, is uh, my big disappointment was when I uh, uh, got out there, I thought I was going to be able to stay on campus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when I got there, they called me into the office and uh, told me that uh, they had made arrangements for me to live out in the city. <laughs> now, everything else was open, but uh, they would not let us live on campus. Uh, and I understand that was some kind of thing that was kind of going on throughout as they, as they opened up. Uh, the cafeterias was open, uh, all the, oh, by the way, uh, during rush week out there, mm -hmm. I was invited to, to join a fraternity. And uh, uh, then I was later told that the graduate chapter had told them that they would throw them off campus if they took me in. <laughs> 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 and that first week of orientation, uh, uh, there was one group out there I have to give credit to, it was called the BSU Baptist Student Association, which I had to be joined. And uh, they had a retreat up in the mountains, up in Cloud Crawl, New Mexico. We all went up to Cloud Crawl. We all stayed in the same tents together and ate together and so forth. Uh, but when we came back, they didn't. I mean, they didn't want to stay in the in the, in the dormitory. Mm -hmm. And one last question: In your wildest dreams, you probably never thought that the University of North Texas would invite you back to the campus to honor you and uh, make you, give you an honorary degree. Uh, is that true? That's true, right? I mean, uh, I was, well, uh, and how did it make you feel to receive that honor? Uh, <coughs> let me, uh, they had a very uh, progressive president up at uh, UNT at that uh, back in, that was back in, uh, uh, what, 05 when they gave me that, mm -hmm. that, that degree. Uh, a, a progressive uh, president. And then they had an office of what they called diversity. Uh, and uh, the head of that office was uh, African American. And she was uh, a very, you know, would be very progressive. Uh, she made sure that uh, our presence was known by bringing in speakers. I would, you know, she bring in speakers and so forth, African American speakers, and and very active uh, on campus and taking care of those concerns of you know, African Americans and all other students too. 
uh, Cassandra. Uh, anyway, uh, I think she was the motivating force with the president. They wanted to do a, a, a fifth-year, you know, recognition of the desegregation of the university, and were proud of their accomplishments. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that they decided that uh, would be was to give you know me that uh, that degree, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean I was <laughs> when I got the call I was shocked, <laughs> but it just shows it just shows that we how we you know, progress over the years. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, Mrs. Kraft, let's. Uh, did you continue to work with Mrs. Kraft or have a relationship with her after you came back uh, yes. from the army? Yes, I did. Okay, uh, what was, what, what did y'all do? Uh, well, I uh, after I started to, uh, came back. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, I when I worked for Mrs. Kraft, I helped Mrs. Kraft get elected to the city council. Okay. All right. Uh, and, you know, I would. Uh, uh, go with her and her youth council, you know, drive them to you know, different places and so forth. Whenever she, you know, would uh, need, need me and so forth. Uh, she was, uh, NAACP was her life. I mean, she, <laughs> she uh, uh, spent most of her, her life, you know, with that, with, with, you know, promoting that organization and promoting its costs and so forth. And I did uh, uh, assist her, you know, during that process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you, of course, quoted uh, several times saying that Mrs. Kraft probably had more impact on you and who you are than, than anybody. Probably, yes, sir. Okay. All right. Talk about that. Then. What kind of impact did she have on you? Well, uh, <clears throat> participating in the Youth Council, okay. doing the travels, uh, dealing with the various issues. Uh, we uh, dealt with civil rights issues, we dealt with the uh, political issues. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I met a lot of people who were uh, more liberal, I guess you might say, in their thinking. Mm -hmm. And all this had a, uh, it just kind of set my, uh, molded me and <laughs> the, the things that I was interested in and so forth for life. Uh, I really recall that uh, uh, the poll tax, I mean, we used to go out and sell poll tax. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that was one of the, I mean, that, that got me interested, I guess, in politics and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> The, you know, when you're growing up, like you know, a little organization like that, there's a lot of little social life that goes along with it, and all that kind of thing. All that, you know, had, had an impact on me. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Uh, Dr. Atkins, anything you want to add? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you off the stand now. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I guess the. Uh, things that I uh, can add is during that period of time one of the things that I regret is the fact that the state uh, of Texas uh, didn't put forth any kind of effort to you know plan and to try to uh, uh, make it, you know, these things work. They were fighting against the Supreme Court's ruling. Mm -hmm. uh, there, I never will forget it. Uh, uh, when I was in high school, when that ruling came down, the principal at the school over Lincoln turned on the PA system, and where we could listen in on the news commentators talk about the ruling, mm -hmm. and the teachers were explaining to us what it meant and telling us the fact that, uh, you know. Y'all are free, y'all can do this, and so forth. And everybody was just, you know, jubilant about the ruling at high school. And then I went home at night, and we had, we had television. And these uh, southern governors was calling, uh, uh, saying never, and 
<laughs> calling for uh, the impeachment of the Chief Justice and uh, talking about words like interposition and intermarriage and uh, bringing up all this negative stuff and not being, you know, mm -hmm. supportive of, 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 the, of the change. And uh, uh, that we had to fight. I mean, we fought that for a long time because it was a long time before the state of Texas came up with, uh, you know, efforts to help people implement this, that, that process. Yeah. And I think it could have been much easier and uh, wouldn't have caused all the frustration, all the problems that we had, had the state done that, you know. They used our tax money to fight us. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that uh, uh, I think that was just, you know, it just, it, it just didn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. Two final questions. I, I told you I was going to stop, but I want, but, uh, but two things just sort of came to mind. One, would you um, file that lawsuit again that you filed in 1955? Would I file it again? Oh, shoot. Okay. I have no problem with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, sir. And then two, what's your secret to staying youthful and young looking as you do? What's that new? Yeah, you can't tell me. What's that new? That's why it's a secret. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking you're 15 years older than me, but yeah, but you look you're much younger than I do. I got more gray hair. <laughs> Not stress. <laughs> yeah, it is stress. It is right stress. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank we're, going, you. we're going to stop it right there and.